Hello again, physics friends. We're going to look at a very brief video here that's an uh, overview and summary of Dirac notation um, and basis kets, amplitudes, and probabilities. Um, and that's going to set us up for figuring out how we find um, different ways of writing the same state using different bases. So here's a very brief summary. Um, we have the notation that this ket um, it represents a state vector that represents the system. So this symbol, um, the vertical bar, the angled bracket, and a symbol inside or a word inside represents a ket. Here I've put in the Greek letter psi, um, and we call that a ket, and it is a state vector that represents a quantum mechanical system. Okay, and the state can be written in terms of a set of basis uh, kets. So the state, any state, can be written in terms of of basis kets. And this is um, similar to unit vectors. If we talk about our standard vectors, okay? So for example, we've seen this before. Let's say we have an SGA aligned in the Z direction. Like so. In that case, we have two possible outputs, and the two states for the outputs would be plus in the z direction and minus in the z direction, and we have some input state. Okay, And we can write that input state as a linear combination of the basis kets plus z and minus z. And here we have um, A and B are amplitudes. And plus Z and minus Z are basis kets. They're the basis states for the system. Okay. And since this is a two-state system with two possible outputs, we only need two basis kets, one to represent each possible state. Okay. Now we have um, the probability that a measurement of mz will give plus mb is given by the magnitude squared of the coefficient of the of that basis state plus z so you take the amplitude and you square it the probability that a measurement of mz will give minus mb is very likewise the modulus squared <coughs> the magnitude squared of the other coefficient, okay? And since the atom has to come out somewhere, so since the atom must emerge from one port, in other words, it's not going to get trapped in the system, it's going to emerge from one port, we need those probabilities, a squared and b squared, to sum to one, one hundred percent. Okay, and we call that the normalization condition. Okay. Good. The other thing we know about basis cats is that.
basis kits are orthogonal. Okay. Here, the, usually, like, when we talk about vectors, orthogonal means perpendicular to each other, right? So for me, orthogonal kind of brings to mind the fact that the x-hat vectors and y-hat unit vectors are perpendicular. So we would say x and y hat, x-hat and y-hat are orthogonal, okay, for geometric vectors. Here we're saying that the basis states are orthogonal, and what we mean by that is that an atom, specifically a silver atom, in state plus z has no probability of being measured in m, z minus, okay? In other words, if you take if you take an atom that's in a pure plus z state and you put it into an analyzer, it will come out the plus z port 100% of the time. It has no probability of coming out the minus port. That's what we mean by orthogonal. If you're in if the state of the system is one of the two basis states, then it will remain in that state in subsequent measurements of the same quantity. So we call that orthogonal. So it, clearly these two um, don't represent like perpendicular directions in the same way that x hat and y hat are perpendicular, but we can generalize this idea of orthogonal um, to mean something similar. And we can take this even one step further with this idea of orthogonality. Um, we have a dot product between two vectors, and that's defined by the magnitude of x times the magnitude of y hat times the cosine of the angle in between them. And these are unit vectors, so their magnitudes are their lengths, and their lengths are 1, and the angle between them is 90 degrees. So here we have 1 times 1 times the cosine of 90. But the cosine of 90 is 0. And so x hat dot y hat is 0, and that's what we mean by orthogonal. It means that their dot product is zero. Well, it turns out that there's there's a way to extend the dot product for kets, okay? And so we can say for kets, we have what we call an inner product. That kind of extends the idea of a dot product. And here the inner product um, is a bracket. So if we take our state plus z and we take the inner product of that with the other basis state minus z, that ends up being um, the amplitude of an atom starting in state plus and ending in the other state, ending in state minus. And we know that that probability is 0. So when we talk about orthogonality for basis kets, we're talking about this inner product being 0. OK, so in our previous example, we saw that we wrote the, we were able to write the input state as a linear combination of the z basis kets, like so. And that's perfectly fine if you're making a measurement um, with an SGAZ, because now you can read off very easily the probabilities of getting a plus measurement or a minus measurement. But what if you were to feed this very same input state into, say, an X analyzer? 
Okay, in that case, it wouldn't be so helpful to write the input state in terms of the z basis because we're not measuring z. Okay, so here we go. Out we come from the SGA x. And the two possible states in this measurement are plus x and minus x. Okay, so how are we going to find the probability of getting a plus x and a minus x? Right. How do we write that out um, given that our state is expressed in terms of z? That becomes harder. So what we'd like to do, um, well, in other words, the probabilities, we don't know what they are, but they are definitely not, um, not equal to mag b squared for the minus state, and they're not mag a squared for the plus state because we're talking about plus x and minus x states and the a and b are the coefficients for the plus z and minus z states. And so we first then have to rewrite the state using the x basis. So that would look something like this. The input equals some linear combination of plus x and minus x with coefficients out front. Well, those coefficients are not going to be a and b because we already used those, so we're going to have some new coefficients, and we can call those c and d. And in that case, then, we can just directly right now read off the probabilities that a measurement of mx would give plus mb, that's the coefficient of that state, squared, mag c squared, and the corresponding probability for a measurement of mx giving minus mb, well, that's just mag d squared. So the question, though, is, like, let's say we knew what a and b were. How, then, do we compute c and d? In other words, if you know how to write the state in one basis, how do you change the basis? That is something that we are going to work out in, um, in a future video, and we will practice that in uh, our coming exercises. But for now... We've given a, a very brief overview of Dirac notation as applied to two-state systems. We've seen um, that you can express any state as a linear combination of a pair of basis kets, and that you can choose any basis kets you want, the Z kets, the X kets, the plus 10 degree kets, those would be fine as well. And for each pair of kets, you're going to have corresponding amplitudes and the probabilities of measuring the system in either one of those basis states is given by the magnitude squared of the corresponding amplitude. Okay, that's it for now. Um, in a future video, we'll dive back into this idea of changing basis um, from, one, uh, from one basis to another, and uh, we'll proceed from there. All right, take care and be well, and I'll see you soon.